a controversial winner, sexist lyrics, feminist lyrics, and Ireland's debut. Let's talk about Eurovision 1965. Welcome to Eurovision Histories, where I watch old editions of Eurovision so you don't have to. The 10th Eurovision Song Contest, or Gran Premio Eurovisione della Canzone, was held in Naples, Italy, and was hosted expertly by Renata Munro, who presented everything in Italian, as well as perfect English. The singer will be accompanied by the Rai Orchestra. And now again, welcome to Naples. And French. Mesdames, Mesdemoiselles, Messieurs, bonsoir. She is arguably the best Italian Eurovision host ever. Sweden returned and future powerhouse Ireland made its debut, resulting in 18 participating countries, a new record. Ireland made its debut with Butch Moore and a slightly boring Walking the Streets in the Rain. Still nobody It finished sixth. The Netherlands sent successful singer Connie van den Boos with her song Tis Genoeg. She offered a very charismatic performance and quite feminist lyrics. She tells her lover that she has had enough genoeg of his lying and cheating. She came 11th and returned in 1998 to present the Dutch votes and this happened. I know you, of course, have taken part, so you must be it's feeling long ago. <laughs> A long time ago, was it? <laughs> no, I didn't mean really And now I've seen everything. Feminist lyrics were also on offer by Denmark's Birgit Brühl, who sang that she had enough of a certain type of womanhood, being sweet and girlish, and that she wasn't into men being men, but rather men being human. Fordin Skuld got top marks from Sweden and Luxembourg, but nothing from anyone else, and thus came seventh. The UK was represented by I Belong, expertly performed by Kathy Kirby. The song tells of the joy of finding true love after a string of bad relationships and got the UK its usual position, second place. Kathy Kirby also became somewhat of a gay icon in the United Kingdom, and the song might be seen as a bit of a political statement, as recently France had vetoed the UK's accession to the predecessor of the European Union. But maybe it's also just a love song. I don't know. Italy sent the winning song of its Sanremo festival yet again. Se piange se ridi was a big hit in Italy and talks about two lovers being in sync, including while crying and laughing. Its singer wasn't only visually inspired by Elvis Presley. Mi Bobby Solo came fifth. Sweden surprised everyone by performing its song entirely in English. There had been no official rule yet that a country had to sing in its national language and everyone had kind of done so by default up to this point. The official language rule was introduced in the following year. Absent friend, the Swedish entry was probably too old-fashioned to make an impact even in English and only came 10th. Tenderly, but I don't know if you still hide this 
Udo Jürgens was back for Austria with Sag ihr, ich lasse sie grüßen, tell her I send her regards, in which he tells a friend to tell his former lover that he's completely fine, even though he's not. Oh, Udo. Sag ihr, ich lasse sie grüßen. Sag ihr, es geht mir gut. Sie ging fort, fort von mir. Und sie weiß, dass nichts mir blieb. He improved on his sixth position in the previous edition and came fourth. Vice Vukov represented Yugoslavia for the second time and only came twelfth. As mentioned in my 1963 video, after the Croatian Spring, he fell out of favor in Yugoslavia, which basically ended his singing career. Portugal was able to improve on their debut result, a last place with zero points, by coming 13th with one point this time. Simon de Oliveira presented a very Portuguese song. <laughs> Sol d'Inverno was about a lost love. She would return to Eurovision in 1969 with Desfolada Portuguesa, her biggest hit in Portugal. Belgium, Spain and Germany got their second zero points, Germany for the second year in a row, and they were joined by Finland. Viktor Klimenko looked a bit like Abraham Lincoln. Especially Spain's Que Bueno, Que Bueno, performed by Conchita Bautista, deserved a better place though. <laughs> Conchita had already represented Spain at their debut in 1961 and was also underrated then. During the voting, Spain read their votes way too fast. Si Madrid, uh, s'il vous plaît. Voici le résultat du jury espagnol. Très bien. Luxembourg. Oui. One point. Luxembourg. France. Uh, s'il vous plaît. Points. Soyez gentil. Angleterre. Cinq points. Je m'excuse. Et ceci termine. Le vote du jury espagnol. The eventual winner had a healthy lead from the very beginning though. A few times the UK got close, but eventually lost by six points to Luxembourg. France Gall and her Poupée de Cire, Poupée de Sang dragged Eurovision into the 1960s and became a giant hit all across Europe. <laughs> It seemed like the first time the contest and its winning song were actually in keeping with the times. France Gall performed the song in a very disengaged manner, which apparently endeared her to the jurors. The song was written by Serge Gainsbourg and is one of the most controversial Eurovision winners ever, despite being one of the biggest hits and most recognizable songs stemming from the competition. The song is full of double entendres, which France Gall at her young age did not understand, and she has said that she felt used by Serge Gainsbourg, especially after recording another song written by him, Sucette, which is literally about lollipops but has many double entendres referring to oral sex. In Poupée de Cire, Poupée de Sang, there is first the self-reference of Gal as a doll under the control of others, in this case Gainsbourg, and her not actually understanding what she is singing about. The song is thus about a theme that is actually exploited by Gainsbourg in the very performance. It also criticizes the audience by saying they will dance to basically anything. France Gall also asks herself in the song what good it does to sing about love if she doesn't know anything about boys yet, just to end the song by saying that she, a wax doll, will soon be able to live her songs without being afraid of the warmth of boys. And now I've heard everything. 
France Gall disassociated herself from Gainsbourg, her winning song in Eurovision itself, because she felt exploited. Interestingly, all of the song's points, bar two from Switzerland, came from non-French-speaking countries. Apparently, jurors in Monaco, France and Belgium did understand the double entendres and did not like it. I hope you liked this episode. If you did, please like and subscribe and come back for my episode on Eurovision 1966.